Australian paleontology is in a weird spot. Australia is ostensibly a first world country occupied by Western culture for 400 years. There are large swaths of the country where people cannot super easily live, where there is a lot of sparse vegetation, lots of dirt, sand, and rocks. Sounds like a good place for fossils, and it sort of is. The Western scientists first familiarized themselves with Australia's recent prehistoric past, the fossils and subfossils of the Pleistocene. This occurred in the 1800s. Dinosaur fossils were likely discovered in Australia before they were identified as dinosaurs, but the first officially identified and described dinosaur fossil was a claw in 1903. Overall though, dinosaur fossils are comparatively rare throughout Australia. This is because most of Western Australia simply doesn't have a lot of the right rocks from the right time exposed in the area for people to look in. Despite this quirk of geology, well over a handful of dinosaurs and other prehistoric Mesozoic animals have been found and described since the 1900s from the few places that do happen to have dino-aged rocks. Even some from the notoriously fossil-poor western half of Australia, though mostly from near the coast. One such find is probably one of the worst I have ever covered. All the way back in 1966, Stephen Hincliffe, Peter Peebles, Robert Coldwell, and Trevor Robinson, students from Scotch College, were visiting an area 20 kilometers east of Geraldton, Western Australia, to look for fossils when they came upon a smooth, shiny chunk of bone sticking out of a rock at a Bringo railway cutting. The boys collected the rock the bone was lodged in and brought it with them. They gave the specimen to Professor Rex Pryder, then of the University of Western Australia, so he could work some magic on the fragment. Not knowing for sure what he had on his hands, he made a mold and cast the fossil, so that he could send that cast to colleagues in London. Once in London, paleontologist Alan Cherig took a look at the thing and thought the fragment a bit a turtle. And that was the end of the story until 20 some odd years later. In 1989, a review of Mesozoic fossil vertebrate material rediscovered the little bone from Geraldton, finally forcing those involved to complete the preparation of the fossil. The bone was removed from the matrix and reinforced with liquid plastic glue, and the darn thing finally got a proper scientific description in 1998 by John Long and Ralph Molnar that was published in the records of the Western Australian Museum. This is that find. A single 8cm 3.1 inch long 4cm 1.6 inch wide chunk from the very end of the left tibia. Long and Milner figured they had enough traits in this bone to slap on a name and do some taxonomy, so the pair named the little nugget Osretta Subotai I, with Oz referring to the shorthand for Australia, raptor for thief, robber, or Caesar, and the species name just being the name of a swift thief character from the Conan the Barbarian movie. Since Ozraptor is such shoddy material, I think it would be beneficial to take a closer look at the traits the authors used to identify it. Here's a handy diagram of the bone and its features so that I can make things a little easier. This part of the tibia is the part that connects to the ankle bones, specifically the astragalus and a little bit of the calcaneum. According to the paper's text, Osraptor's tibia has a high rectangular and well-defined notch etched into the bottom. This would have been where the astragalus articulated with the tibia. The notch, or more formally referred to as a facet, is straight on one side and has a ridge in the center on the other. The medial malleolus is the bony bump of the ankle that faces inwards. In Osraptor, that bump is weakly developed, meaning it wasn't super big or obvious. The author team compared the bone to a bunch of other theropod dinosaurs from the late Triassic and early Jurassic, but couldn't place Osraptor in any known group, leaving it as an indeterminable theropod dinosaur. The students who found Osraptor didn't make note of the exact rock layer it originated from, though that may not have been possible considering it was loose on the ground by a railway cutting. Regardless, Long and Molnar were able to estimate that it most likely came from the Kolalura sandstone because of the type of rock the fossil was stuck in and because of some petrified wood bits found with it. 
The Kolalura sandstone dates to the Middle Bajocian age of the Middle Jurassic Epoch, about 169 million years ago. Nice. This makes Osraptor the oldest officially known Australian dinosaur and remains one of two known from the Jurassic period. Before we move on to what the hell kind of dinosaur Osraptor may or may not be, let's bring in Mr. Man from Animal Planet's The Most Extreme to get an idea of about how large this animal would have been when it was alive. From the measurements of the tibia trunk, the rest of this leg bone has been estimated to be between 17 and 20 centimeters, 6.7 and 7.9 inches. From this, a general estimate of a total body length of 2 meters, 6.6 .6 feet can be attained, though this is very tentative. Thanks, Mr. Mayan. In 2005, paleontologist Oliver Rauhat published a paper in Geological Magazine in which he reviewed the then-known theropod material from the Tendaguru beds of Tanzania. It was then, and seems to pretty much still be, the only Southern Hemisphere late Jurassic aged locality to contain theropod fossils. I say pretty much because the late Jurassic Chilisaurus of Chile was described exactly a decade after this study. However, this one is even more anomalous than Osraptor. It's either a theropod, ornithischian, sauropodomorph, or some other form of basal dinosaur. Anyway, Rauhat found enough similarities between Osraptor and an abelisauroid bone from Tendaguru to tentatively classify Osraptor as an abelisauroid. That would make it the oldest known form of this family, a group that contains the short-armed, blunt-skulled speed demons. Seven years after the last paper, Oliver Rauhat published another study, this time in the Proceedings of the Geologist Association, in which he re-evaluated another theropod tibia, this one from mid-Jurassic England. It was previously identified as belonging to the Abelisauroidea group. However, he found that the traits used to justify the identification were not strong enough, and that the same went for his own use of those traits to assign Osraptor to the Abelisauroidea back in 2005. So, he concluded, Osraptor remains back where it started, as an indeterminate theropod dinosaur. That is, unfortunately, pretty much the whole story of Osraptor. Not even much can be said about the world in which it lived. Since no other good fossils have come from the Kolalura sandstone yet, just one indeterminate sauropod vertebra, some isolated plesiosaur pieces, and petrified wood. I guess that could mean there was marine areas as well as forested beachy areas. Only more sampling of this rock layer will help uncover the mystery of Osrapta. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, like this video, drop a comment in the comment section below, and hit the bell icon to stay in the know with everything Edge. Thanks for watching.